Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotac and today Apple released iOS 17.3 beta one. This is available to developers and iOS 17.3 public beta one should be out either by the time you're watching this video or sometime tomorrow, typically. Now this is available for all iOS 17 supported devices from the iPhone 10s, 10s max to the iPhone 15 pro and 15 pro max. And as you may have already noticed, it's a very large 6.39 gigabytes. That's because it has to install a full update. Once you go from iOS 17.2, the public release to the new beta release, anytime you swap back and forth, it's going to be a large install. This was released alongside many other updates such as iPad OS 17.3 beta one watch OS 10.3 beta one one TV OS and HomePod OS 17.3 beta one Mac OS 14.3 beta one, as well as vision OS 1.0 beta seven and a couple other Mac OS updates for older devices. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then general, then about, as you can see, the build number is 21D 5026 F. And this particular update does bring some new features, things we didn't really expect that are really nice. And the first one is what's called stolen device protection. This is actually something that popped up when I rebooted the phone for the first time, not on all devices, but if we swipe to unlock, I'll put in my passcode on this iPhone 11 and you'll see it says software update complete. We'll tap continue and see if it actually shows it. And you can see this new stolen device protection. It's in beta. It says testing is now available for stolen device protection. This new feature adds an additional layer of security in the unlikely case that someone has stolen your iPhone and also obtained your passcode. If we scroll down, you'll see it says accessing your saved password requires face ID to be sure it's you changing sensitive settings. Like your Apple ID password is protected by a security delay, which is something I've wanted for quite some time. And then it says no delay is required when the phone is at a familiar lake location, such as home and work. So if we turn that on, we can enable it here do it later and I'll show you where it is in settings. So it says, welcome to iPhone. And then we've got our home screen. If we go into our iPhone and then go to settings, you'll see under face ID and passcode. If we scroll down, we now have stolen device protection. So we can turn this on and add that layer of security and it's available. Now, if I want to turn it off, it will require face ID. Then I can turn it off. So if you want to use that, this is something again, that's in beta with beta one. Also, if you have stolen device protection enabled, if we scroll up and try to set up an alternate appearance, if you're not in your home location or work, you'll actually get a new splash screen that delays the actual setup of that new face ID. So you'll see this was sent in by my friend Brahm and it says security delay required to set up face ID. A security delay is required because stolen device protection is active and iPhone is not at a familiar location. It lasts for an hour and you'll still be able to use your iPhone during this delay. So that's something you'll see if you're not at your location and try to change your appearance and don't have your information there. And it's just a security measure as well. It is not on the iPad. It's not in the menu on the iPad with iPad OS 17.3 beta one. It's just not there at all. So if we go into our settings here and you'll see under face ID and passcode, if we scroll down, it's not there. However, it's probably less likely that someone would take it on your iPad or it could be coming to it a little bit later. Something Apple has actually brought back in this update that we expected with iOS 17.2 is collaborative playlists under your playlist. You'll now have this icon again, where we can actually add someone to collaborate. And then after they've maybe added a different song to the overall collaboration playlist, you'll see who's collaborated and brought it in. So you'll see different icons for each person that's added music to the song or to the playlist. And then you can just add it however you'd like. So it's really nice that it's there. Hopefully it will release with iOS 17.3 when that comes out. We'll talk about when to expect that a little bit later. Now, iOS 17.2 added the new journal app, and there's some new options on iOS 17.3 for it within the settings. If we go into settings, scroll down to where we have journal, I'll bring in iOS 17.2 to show you the difference under journal. You'll see that we have some new options for notifications. So we have not only Siri and search and background app refresh, but we also have options such as cellular data, media and Apple music, and then also notifications as well as face ID here. So you'll see that those are options here within the journaling app where they've just brought some of those here as well. And then we have all of the same ones for skip journaling suggestions, lock journal, journaling schedule, and saved photos. Also, it appears based on what we see in the code is if we go into settings and then we scroll down to privacy and security, scroll to the bottom. And if you're 
you're using lockdown mode, lockdown mode, when this is enabled, won't allow you to use game center. You'll actually get a message that says can't use game center when in lockdown mode. So that's something I haven't seen before, but I don't typically use lockdown mode. Now, as far as other features so far, that seems to be everything in iOS 17.3 beta one so far, typically they'll add more features as time goes on with maybe new emoji. We don't see those yet. Maybe side loading in 2024. We just don't know a hundred percent. As far as bug fixes, well, there's no mention of bug fixes yet. Some of that is due to in the feedback app. If we wait for it to load here, go into recent activity, Apple hasn't updated their notes yet as far as what they've fixed in this update or anything else. And on the public facing website where they share the release notes, there's no mention here whatsoever of anything yet. They haven't updated the website. They'll probably do that within a couple hours or so. As far as bugs that I've noticed so far, while the wallpaper fading bug is still there, you'll see it's nice and bright. If I slide home, it sort of dims a little bit. Again, if I bring that back and then slide up, it dims again. So that hasn't been fixed. I thought maybe they'd fix it at this point, but so far they haven't. As far as the notification bug, that's still there. As you can see, it just sort of jumps in, but I haven't heard any mention of anything with the Wi-Fi fix, anything else as far as this update. I'm sure they've updated a few things and they've also updated the modem in this version as well. So we do have a new modem that should help with overall connectivity, but we'll have to give it a few days and talk about that on the weekend with the follow-up to see if it's something they've resolved. As far as other news, one thing I wanted to share is I received an email that Apple's opening a new Apple store in the Charlotte area. Earlier this year, they actually closed one down Apple North Lake, and there's a new one opening up and you'll see in my email, this is just to a general account. It's not anything special. I'm sure other people received this as well, but it says Apple Burkdale village. Join us for the grand opening on December 14th at 10 AM. So that's 10 AM Eastern time. And you can see the location there in Huntersville, North Carolina. It should be a nice location. And let me know if you think I should maybe visit that and record about it, talk about it in a video or something else. As far as anything else, well, there is a new AirPods beta firmware update, which is a bit surprising, but it's for the AirPods 2, AirPods 3, AirPods Pro first generation and AirPods Max, bringing it to version 6A307. So finally, they're getting some sort of update. I'm surprised it's not a public update, but if I find anything new in it, I'll be sure to share that in a separate video. As far as performance, let's take a look at the iPhone 11. You saw we were on the hello screen. It's the first time opening music going in seeing how things load seems to be fine. As far as that goes, if we go over and scroll here on the app library, seems to be nice and smooth and the phone is staying nice and cool. We'll check that in just a moment, but the same is true with ProMotion on the iOS 17.3 beta with the 15 pro max, nice and smooth there. Now let's take a look with the thermal camera. We'll bring that in here. And at the hottest point, see what we have here. We have about 29.5 to about 30 degrees Celsius. And as far as Fahrenheit in the same area, about 85 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So pretty good overall. That's nice and cool to the touch. Not really an issue as far as that goes. And I did run Geekbench on it as well. We'll check in a moment, but as far as overall battery life, it will take a few days to measure that. But if we go into the settings here and we take a look at our battery health, as far as our cycle count, we'll go to general then about, you'll see, this is the iPhone I've been using since new. I have 68 cycles. And if we go to the battery, we'll scroll down to battery here, battery health and charging. I'm still at 100%. As far as my battery life, well, on iOS 17.2, it did get me through the day, but it wasn't anything phenomenal. Yesterday, I had five hours and 52 minutes of screen active time, three hours and five minutes of screen idle time. Today, I've had four hours and eight minutes of screen active time, and I'm down to 67%. I'd say it's been doing much better so far since installing this update. As far as if you should install iOS 17.3 beta one, well, I would caution you against doing that because we probably won't see a new update for a little while at this point. Typically every year in December, Apple actually releases a beta one of the current version that we have now. So 16.3 beta one, and then beta two won't come until January typically. So I would caution against actually installing this update. Last year, like I said, they actually released it in the second week of January around the 10th of this year, or the 9th is what I would expect this year. So I probably would skip this and just stick with the stable iOS 17.2 version and see how that goes. Unless you have an extra phone, as far as the iOS 17.3 release date, that could be at the end of January or possibly into February. It was typically around the 26th of last year. So we could see it around that same time frame, but they could push that back or release it closer to the Apple vision pro, which is now expected around January. 
Then we'll move on to iOS 17.4. Now, as far as benchmarks, I did run it twice. They're not that impressive so far, but that's right after installing a major update. It has to process a bunch in the background. So you'll see I had 2,891 for single core, 6,952 for multi-core. If we take a look at the history, you'll see here where it was a little bit better with iOS 17.2, and it's varied about very similarly to what we had with the last two I ran. So not terrible or anything like that. I would expect this to go up and we'll check that in the weekend follow-up video. Now, if you've found anything in this update, I haven't mentioned, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below and I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.